Hello BookTube, it's time for another essay, and we are still sticking with Augustine Burrow. Um, the last few had sort of, uh, they smacked of book reviews. This one more so. Uh, it doesn't state anything in in the uh, book to say that they were a book review. However, this one's entitled Gossip in a Library, and he sticks mostly with a book called Gossip in a Library. Uh, so, it, it could be. Um, to me, it's still an essay. I think of book reviews as essays as well. I have a sort of a wide uh, description of an essay. Uh, but I mention it because somebody may say, well, it's not an essay, that's a book review. Well, you say tomato, I say tomato. Gossip in a Library. There are no books in Eden, and there will be none in heaven. But between times and it is those I speak of, it is otherwise. Mr. Thomas Greenwood, in a most meretricious work on public libraries, supplies figures which show that, without counting pamphlets, which are books gone wrong, <laughs> um, or manuscripts, which are books in terrarium, there are, at this present moment, upwards of 70 mil 71 million printed books in bindings, in the several public libraries of Europe and America. To estimate the number and extent of private libraries in, the, in those countries, it is impossible. In many large houses there are no books at all, which is to make ignorance visible, whilst in many small houses there are, or seem to be, nothing else, which is to make knowledge inconvenient. Yet, as there are upwards of 280 million uh, of ha inhabitants of Europe and America, I cannot greatly err if a passion for round numbers derives me to an assertion that there are at least 300 million books in those countries, uh, not counting Bibles and prayer books. It is a poor show. Russia, Russia is greatly to blame, her European population of 88 million being so badly provided for that it brings down the average. Were Russia left out in the cold, we might, uh, were our books to be divided amongst our population per capita, rely upon having two volumes apiece. This would not afford Mr. Goss, the title of one of whose uh, books I have stolen, uh, much material for gossip, particularly as his two books might easily chance to be duplicates. There are no habits of man more alien to the doctrine of communist than those of the collector, and there is no collector, not even the basest of them all, the Belial of his tribe, the man who collects money, whose love of private property is intenser, whose sense of the joys of ownership is keener than the book collector's. Mr. William Morris once hinted at a good time coming when at almost every street corner there would be a public library, where beautiful and rare books will be kept for citizens to examine. The citizens will first wash his hands at the parochial basin and then dry them on a parochial towel, after which ritual he will walk in and stand on cue until it comes to uh, to he to be his turn to feast his eye upon some triumph of modern or some miracle of old typography. He will then return to his bookless home, proud and satisfied, tasting of the joy that is uh, in widest commonality spread. Alas, he will do nothing of the kind, not at least if he is one of those whom the old Adam of the bookstalls still uh, breathes. If, sorry, if he is one of those in whom the old Adam of the bookstalls still breathes. A public library must always be in an abomination. To enjoy a book, you must own it. John Jones, his book. That is the best book plate. I have never admired the much-talked-of book uh, plate of Groyer, uh, which, in addition to his own name, bore the ridiculous advice, et, et amoricum, fudge. There is no evidence that Groyle ever lent any man a book with his uh, plate in it. His collection was dispersed after his death, 
and then sentimentalists fell a weeping over his supposed generosity. It would be as reasonable to commend the hospitality of a dead man because you found amongst his papers a vast number of unposted invitations to dinner upon a date he long outlived. Sentiment is seldom in place, but on a book plate it is particularly odious. To paste in each book an invitation to steal it, as Groyer seems to have done, is foolish. But so also is to invoke, as some book plates do, curses upon the heads of all subsequent possessors, as if any man who wanted to add a volume to his collection would be deterred by such braggadocio. But this is a digression. Public libraries can never satisfy the longings of book collectors any more than the, can the private libraries of other people. Whoever really cared a snap of his fingers for the contents of another man's library, unless he is known to be dying. It is a humorous spectacle to watch one book collector uh, exhibiting his stores to another. If the owner is a gentleman, as he usually is, he affects indifference, a poor thing, he, may, he seems to say, yet mine own. Whilst the visitor, if human, as he always is, exhibits disgust. If the volume prefer preferred for the visitor's examination is a genuine rarity, not in his own collection, he surly inquires how it, has, it was come by, whilst, if it is no great thing, he testily expresses his astonishment, it should be thought worth keeping, and this, although he has the very same edition at home. On the other hand, though actually uh, visits to other men's libraries rarely seem a given pleasure, the perusal of the catalogues of such libraries has always been a favorite pastime of collectors. But this can be accounted for without in any way as, uh, aspersing, aspersing the truth of the general statement that the only books a lover of them takes pleasure in are his own. Mr. Goss's recent volume, Gossip in the Library, is a very pleasing example of the pleasure taken by a book hunter in his own books. Just as some men and more women assume uh, your interest in the contents of their nurseries, so Mr. G uh, Goss uh, seeks to win our ears as he talks to us about some of the books on his shelves. He has secured my willing attention and is not likely to be disappointed of a considerable audience. We live in vocal times when small birds make melody in every bow. The book uh, collectors were a taciturn race. The Binleys, the Sykeses, the Herbers. They made their vast collections in silence. Their own tastes, fancies, predilections, they concealed. They never gossiped of their libraries. Their names are only preserved to us by the prices given for their books after their deaths. Bindley's copy uh, fetched three pounds ten shillings. Sykes is four pounds fifteen shillings. Thus is the buyer of today tempted uh, to this doom, forgetful of the fact that these great names are only quoted when the prices realized that their sales were less than those now demanded. But solacing as uh, is the thought of those grave, silent times, indisposed as one often is for the chirpy familiar familiarities of this present, it is, or it ought to be, a pious and therefore pleasant reflection that there never was a time when more people found delight in book hunting or were more willing to pay for and read about their pastime than, than now. Rich people may no doubt still meet with who think it is uh, it a serious matter to buy a book if it costs more than three shillings and ninepence. It was recently alleged in an affidavit made by a doctor in lunacy uh, that for a well-to-do bachelor to go into the Strand and in the course of the same morning spend five pounds on the purchase of old books was a ground for belief his insanity uh, and for locking him up. Uh, these, however, are but vagaries, for it is certain that the number of people who will read a book like Mr. Goss's steadily increases. 
this is its justification and it is complete a complete one. It can never be wrong to give pleasure. To talk about books is better than to read about them, but as a matter of hard fact, the opportunities life affords of talking about books are very few. The mood and the company seldom coincide. When they do, it is delightful, but they seldom do. Mr. Goss's book ought not to be read in a fierce, nagging spirit which demands, what is the good of this, or who cares for that? His talk, it, it must be admitted, is not of masterpieces. The books he talks down are the same instances, at all events, sad trash. Smart's poems, for example, in edition of 1752, which does not contain the David, is not a book which, viewed badly and by itself, can be honestly described as worth reading. This remark is not prompted by jealousy, for I have the book myself and seldom, seldom fail to find the list of subscribers interesting, for among many other famous names it contains those of Mr. Gray, Peter's College, Cambridge, Mr. Samuel Richardson, editor of Clarissa, two books, and Mr. Voltaire, historiographer of France. There are no Johnsons among the subscribers, but not Samuel. There are, oh, sorry, various Johnsons among the subscribers, but not Samuel, who apparently would uh, life or pray uh, with Kit Smart than buy his poetry, uh, thereby showing the doctor's usual piety and good sense. And uh, it, there's an asterisk for a uh, footnote that quotes, he insisted on people uh, praying with him, and I'd as leaf pray with Kit Smart as with anyone else, end of quote. Although the nagging spirit before referred uh, to is to be uh, deprecated, it is sometimes amusing to lose your temper with your own hobby. If If a book collector ever does this, he he longs to silence those libraries of bad authors. Uh, Tis an inglorious aquist, said Joseph Glanville in his famous Vanity of Dogmatizing. I quote from the first edition, 1661, though the second is the rarer. Quote, to have our heads, our volumes laden as they were, uh, Cardinal Camperus, his mules with old and useless luggage. Twas in vain idolizing of authors, Glanville has just before observed, which gave birth to that silly vanity of impertinent uh, citations and inducing authority in things never requiring nor deserving it. End quote. In the same strain, he proceeds. Quote, Methinks tis a pitiful piece of knowledge that can be learnt from an index and a poor ambition uh, to be rich in the inventory of another's treasure. To boast a memory, the most that those uh, pendants can aim at, is but a humble ostentation. Tis better to own a judgment, though but with a curtisuplex, of coherent notions than a memory like a sepulchre furnished with a load of broken and discarnate bones, end quote. Thus, for the fasc uh, fascinating Glanville, those mode of putting things is powerful. There are times when the contemplation of huge libraries wearies, and when even the names of Bindley and Sykes fail to please, Dr. Johnson's library sold at Christie's for Two hundred and forty-seven pounds nine shillings. Let those sneer who dare. It was Johnson, not Binley, who wrote the lives of the poets. But of course, no sensible man ever quarrels with his hobby. A little patience every now and again uh, verigrates the mo monotony of routine. Mister Goss tells us in his book that he cannot resist restoration comedies. The bulk of them he knows to be bad as bad can be. He admits they are not literature, whatever they may mean, but whatever that may mean, but he in, intends on going on collecting them all the same till the inevitable hour when death collects him. This is the true spirit. Herein lies happiness, which consists in being interested in something. It does not much matter what. 
in this spirit, let me take up Mr. Goss's book again and read what he has to tell about Fairmount or the history of France, a famed romance in 12 parts, or about Mr. John Hopkins' collection of poems printed by Thomas Warren for Bennett Branbury at the Blue Anchor in the lower walk of the New Exchange, 1700. The romance is dull, and as it occupies more than 1,100 folio pages, may be pronounced tedious, and the poetry is bad, but as I do not seriously intend ever to read a line of either the romance or the poetry, this is no great matter. And so ends. And I, I thought that was funny, like he's... Uh, uh, he talks about he can't find anybody to, you know, speak to about a uh, thing. Well, there's BookTube. Well, that sort of uh, solved things. And nothing has changed today. Uh, people do like buying and reading about books. I do. Do you see all of them behind me here? Uh, so, yeah. So, there's um, same one. And uh, I know so, uh, that's another, another essay done. And tomorrow we've got... Um, Librarians at play. Let's see what happens there when libraries get up to strange things. Librarians get up to strange things. Anyway, have a good evening, BookTube, and I will see you tomorrow.